as heavy as lead. It's a common expression and it's true. Lead is heavy for its size. A cricket ball weighs about 160 grams and a radius of about 3.6 centimeters. It's a little bit bigger than a baseball. A solid ball of lead, the same size, would weigh 2.2 kilograms. Swap the lead for gold though, and the ball would be more than half as heavy again at close to 3.8 kilograms. Dividing an object's mass by its volume tells you its density. The density of lead is 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter, that of gold 19.4 grams per cubic centimeter. Denser still are a handful of other elements including tungsten and platinum. But densest of all is a precious metal that's much rarer than either gold or platinum. Element 76, osmium. A cricket ball made of osmium would weigh about 4.4 kilograms, slightly more than a women's shot put. No substance on earth has a greater density. Extremes on earth, however, pale into insignificance compared with those found in other parts of the cosmos. An inkling of what might be possible comes from thinking about the makeup of familiar substances. Everything around us is composed of atoms. An atom of osmium, for instance, consists of a nucleus containing 76 protons and, most commonly, 160 neutrons around which circulates a cloud of 76 electrons. Only the nucleus is substantial, accounting for almost all the atom's mass, and yet the nucleus is tiny compared with the atom as a whole. An osmium nucleus has a radius of just 7.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters, or 7.2 picometers. That's about 25,000 times less than the radius of an osmium atom, equivalent to an atom to nucleus volume ratio of about 15 trillion. Most of an atom is empty space. So what outwardly may seem like a hard, solid object, such as a rock or an iron bar, is really almost ghost-like in its internal emptiness. Despite that, it's very difficult to make something that's solid any denser by squeezing it because atoms are formidably strong and rigid. Even the immense pressures found deep within a planet can only compress solid matter to a modest degree. Stars, on the other hand, are much more massive than planets so that their deep interiors are squeezed much harder by the great weight of the overlying layers. The pressure at the center of the sun is about 265 billion times greater than the atmospheric pressure at Earth's surface. What's more, the sun's core is extremely hot, about 15 million degrees Celsius. At this temperature, atoms are stripped of all their electrons, leaving behind bare nuclei. The hot soup of free electrons and naked nuclei is known as a plasma a fourth state of matter that is different from solid, liquid or gas. Because the atomic structure has been broken down in a plasma, it's possible to squash the constituent electrons and nuclei much closer together than would be the case with ordinary matter, resulting in a higher density. This is true even though the nuclei present in the core of most stars, such as the Sun, are those of the lightest elements hydrogen and helium. The density in the Sun's core is estimated to be as high as 160 grams per cubic centimeter, seven times higher than the density of osmium. A cricket ball made of hot plasma scooped from the center of the Sun would weigh about 31 kilograms, or roughly as much as a 10-year-old child. In the distant future, the density deep inside the Sun will rise further. At some point, several billion years from now, all the hydrogen in the Sun's core will have been converted into helium by nuclear fusion. To begin with, this helium won't be hot enough to itself fuse into heavier elements. Instead, it will be squeezed harder and harder by the weight of the overlying layers,
causing its density to soar to about 10 million grams, 10 tons per cubic centimeter. Only then will another force come into play that prevents further compression. The electrons in the compressed helium plasma will resist being pushed closer together by a phenomenon called the Pauli exclusion principle. According to this principle, no two neighboring electrons can be in exactly the same state as defined by four special quantities known as quantum numbers. Matter that's so squashed the exclusion principle resists further compression is said to be degenerate. Later in their evolutionary journey, sun-like stars grow to become red giants before casting off their bloated outer layers to leave behind hot, planet-sized white dwarfs. These exposed stellar cores are made entirely of degenerate matter, doomed to cool for eternity, but supported against further gravitational implosion by the pressure of electrons resisting further overcrowding. The Sun is a very ordinary star which just looks spectacularly big and bright because it's so close. Many stars are bigger, brighter and more to the point, more massive than the Sun. Their endpoints are correspondingly more extreme. A star much heavier than the Sun explodes violently at the end of its life leaving behind a core that can't stabilize as a white dwarf. Instead, if the remnant core weighs more than about 1.4 times as much as the Sun, electron degeneracy isn't enough to prevent the core from collapsing further under the force of its own gravity. Electrons and protons are crammed together so hard they combine to become neutrons, giving rise to a miniature but massive stellar core known as a neutron star. Imagine the mass of one and a half suns crammed into a ball just 15 kilometers or so wide. The stuff of which it's made is neutronium, an ultra-dense form of matter in which neutrons, perhaps with a few protons and electrons sprinkled here and there, are packed tightly together. A neutronium cricket ball would weigh about 200 billion tons, or roughly the same as Mount Everest. The only thing stopping a neutron star from squeezing itself even smaller is neutron degeneracy, due to the exclusion principle acting on closely packed neutrons. Conceivably, there's a more dense state that may exist in the cores of some neutron stars. If the temperature and pressure in the heart of a neutron star are high enough, it's been hypothesized, the degeneracy pressure of the neutrons might be overcome. If this were to happen, the neutrons would be forced to merge and break apart into quarks, the building blocks of particles such as protons and neutrons. This would lead to an ultra-dense phase of matter called quark matter. It's an open question whether quark matter and quark stars exist in the universe today, but what's certain is that if the stellar core left behind after a star explodes has a mass greater than about twice that of the Sun, then there's nothing that can stop it from progressing to the ultimate state of gravitational collapse. Above the limit of about two solar masses, not even the degenerate pressure of electrons, neutrons or quarks can prevent gravity from crushing the core in the wink of an eye into a black hole. What goes on inside a black hole within its event horizon from which not even light can escape, present day physics has only a tenuous grasp. If the black hole doesn't rotate, current theory predicts that the density of matter at its center is infinitely high. That prediction reflects our ignorance rather than actual fact. The laws of physics as we know them break down at the central so-called singularity. But it's a different story if the black hole rotates, as in reality it almost certainly would, because it evolved from a star, which itself spun around. The singularity inside a rotating black hole, into which all its mass is concentrated, takes the form not of a point, but of a ring-like shape. The density of its matter, therefore, although incredibly high, will at least be finite. 
Black holes are the holders of numerous physical records in the universe today, including that for the highest density. But there's one cosmic event that surpasses even the black hole's superlatives. About 13.8 billion years ago, all of the matter and energy we see around us today burst into being in that most inconceivable of phenomena, the Big Bang. The earliest meaningful time we can talk about in science today is one ten million trillion trillion trillionth, or 10 to the minus 43, of a second after the point at which time began. At this earliest moment, gravity split away from the three other fundamental forces of nature. All of the mass and energy we observe in the universe today was corralled within a volume of space just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 of a meter across, far, far smaller than an individual proton or neutron. Little wonder that its density was higher than anything that ever has been or ever will be subsequently matched. A staggeringly high 10 to the 90 kilograms per cubic centimeter.